So for this video, I want to answer how does a centrifuge work? Um, a centrifuge in like its basic state is something that just holds a couple of test tubes that can be suspended. And they are secured and the, the base is spun around. So the, the test tubes then whirl around. Now, what we need to understand is that centripetal acceleration uh, that I was talking about earlier. So keep in mind, second law says, for an acceleration to occur, we have to have a net force acting on it uh, with the net force acting in the same direction as the acceleration. Uh, it's not stated in the law, I don't think, but it's it, it it's true. So, um, hopefully we know something moving in a circle. That the acceleration, uh, keep in mind, it has the same direction as delta V. So, if we subtract V from V naught, we will get a delta V that is inward. So if our delta V is inward, our acceleration is inward, and our net force is also inward. So we're going to call both the acceleration and the net force centripetal. So again, centripetal. You may have heard of centrifugal. Um, centripetal means center seeking, so centrifugal means center fleeing. And this is really only a force if you're in the non inertial reference frame, like if you're a bug in the test tube, you would experience this force. It's, it's not like a push or pull that's on you, it's a, it's a, it's the sensation, um, it's like it, we call it a fictional force because it, it even though it's not a push or pull it just makes the math work but we are always viewing this from an inertial reference frame in this class um well if if, uh, if we're covering ap1 here um so we're just going to be talking about centripetal forces um, centripetal force If, if you think of it as uh, Newton's laws here, the way the centrifuge works, if we have a vial of blood, consider the red blood cells in the plasma. Um, the acceleration depends on the inertia of the object. So what will happen as the spinning um, occurs, the denser material, the plasma, will experience a greater inward acceleration, whereas the red blood cells will experience less inward acceleration because they're denser, more inertia, and we have now separated the plasma from the cells. So it all has to do with inertia. Um, if we go back to, to all this, we can rewrite some of the stuff. Um, there's a few things that I, I also want to talk about. First of all, remember, centripetal force is a net force. So there's always something that's causing the centripetal force. The centripetal force itself is not a type of force. So um, here, the, the wall of the test tube is providing a normal force. Um, if we go back to our uh, sun and earth example, in that case, um, gravity is acting as our centripetal force. If we're talking about a car making a turn on the highway, the normal force is upward, so that can't be the centripetal force. The, the gravitational force is downward, so it's got to be the friction pushing in. 
So we, in that case, it could be friction. If the car is not sliding, we would call that a static friction. Even though the car is moving uh, relative to the road, if it's not if it's not sliding to the left or to the right, um, it, it's staying put at least along that dimension. So we could call it a static friction if we wanted. Um, so the net force is always either caused by another force or it could be a component of some force or uh, again it's a summation so it could be due to multiple forces um, don't forget if you looked at those derivations i asked you to to look up um, m is also equal to v or not m but a is also equal to v squared over r so we have other ways that we can um, find the centripetal force. My tips still stand. Draw your free body diagrams. Um, remember that you have two equations for net force, the second law equation and the definition of net force. You add all your forces together but as a vector sum, not a scalar sum. So uh, that's all I got as far as centripetal force. We'll start doing some sample problems.